Hi everyone, this lesson is on what to avoid if you're taking metoprolol and other beta blockers. So in this lesson we're going to talk about dietary interactions, we're also going to talk about medication interactions, and we're also talking about some other interactions that can occur when taking metoprolol, and those would be best to avoid or at least try to reduce. So let's first talk about what metoprolol is. So metoprolol is also known as low pressor. It is a medication used to reduce blood pressure and heart rate. And it's used to treat hypertension, so high blood pressure. It's used to treat anginal chest pain, congestive heart failure, acute myocardial infarctions, and arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation. It is a beta blocker, so it reduces blood pressure by blocking beta adrenergic receptors. And more specifically, it's going to be blocking beta-1 receptors in the heart, so cardiac beta-1 receptors. It has little activity on beta-2 receptors, but primarily it's going to be blocking beta-1 receptors in the heart. And what this does is that in blocking beta-1 receptors, it's going to prevent catecholamines like epinephrine and norepinephrine from binding to the beta-1 receptor. And in blocking beta-1 receptors, it helps reduce the heart rate and reduces renin release. And both of these effects are going to lead to reduced blood pressure. So this is how metoprolol can have its effects. Now the problem is that metoprolol can cause a variety of mild and or severe side effects, including bradycardia, which is too low of a heart rate, hypotension or low blood pressure, dizziness, and headache. And there are a wide variety of different factors that can interact with metoprolol and other beta blockers to increase their side effects. So we'll talk about those and why they do as we go through this lesson. Before we talk about what to avoid when taking metoprolol, it's best to understand how metoprolol is metabolized. Now metoprolol, like many other medications, is metabolized in the liver. And it's metabolized by an enzyme called CYP2D6. And this enzyme is going to break down metoprolol into its metabolites. And metoprolol has a three to four hour half-life. So it's important to understand that metoprolol is metabolized by this particular enzyme because this is going to help us understand why certain things can interact with metoprolol to increase or worsen side effects. Now let's talk about what to avoid when taking metoprolol. So the first one is alcohol or ethanol. So this is going to be beverages like beer and wine and others. Ethanol has a vasodilative property, meaning that it can increase the dilation of blood vessels. And because of this, it can lead to reductions in blood pressure. Now, as mentioned before, metoprolol can also reduce blood pressure. So if you're taking both metoprolol and alcohol, then you can actually reduce your blood pressure too much. So you can have issues with hypotension or low blood pressure and dizziness. So this is the reason why alcohol should be reduced or avoided when taking metoprolol. Another substance that can interact with metoprolol is marijuana or cannabis. So cannabis and related products can increase levels in activity of metoprolol. This occurs due to cannabis-induced changes to CYP. 2D6 metabolism, so because metoprolol is metabolized through this enzyme, cannabis seems to cause alterations in activation of CYP2D6, so this can lead to higher levels of metoprolol. So because of this, it would be best to reduce or avoid marijuana or cannabis use when taking metoprolol. We can also see interactions with SSRI antidepressants, so selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. There are a large list of SSRIs that can interact with metoprolol. These include fluoxetine or Prozac, Proxetine or Paxil, Duloxetine or Cymbalta, Venlafaxine or Effexor, Citalopram, and Sertraline or Zoloft. This class of medications, the SSRIs, affects CYP2D6 metabolism. So we essentially can get stronger effects of metoprolol. So again, higher levels of metoprolol leading to lower blood pressure and lower heart rate, among many other side effects as well. And then because metoprolol is a beta blocker, it's best to avoid other beta blockers. So other beta blockers in concurrent use with metoprolol can cause issues. And these beta blockers include atenolol, bisiprolol, carvedilol, esmolol, labetalol, natalol, and propenolol, so the lol medications. So they have an additive effect on reducing heart rate and blood pressure, and again, it exacerbates those side effects we talked about before. We can also see issues with NSAID use as well. So NSAIDs are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Examples include ibuprofen, naproxen, diclofenac, aspirin, and ketorolac. Using these together with metoprolol can increase potassium levels in the blood. Metoprolol on its own can lead to increases in potassium. It can actually lead to mild increases in potassium levels. But using these medications as well, especially if you're using a lot of NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, can also increase potassium levels. So if you're using both of these, we can have even higher or more significant increases in blood potassium levels. So 
Again, this is something to think about as well. We can also see interactions with diphenhydramine. So diphenhydramine is also known as Benadryl. It's an antihistamine used to treat allergies. And it can cause increased levels of metoprolol via inhibition of CYP2D6 metabolism. So diphenhydramine inhibits CYP2D6 metabolism, inhibiting the metabolism of metoprolol, leading to higher levels of metoprolol, and again, increasing side effects. We can also see metoprolol interacting with other heart medications, including antiarrhythmia medications, and these include diltiazem. So diltiazem is a medication that acts to reduce heart rate. In combination with metoprolol, it will worsen bradycardia. They're both doing the same thing through a different mechanism, but they're both reducing the heart rate so they can worsen bradycardia or a low heart rate. Quinidine can also interact with metoprolol as well. This is a antiarrhythmic medication. It's also an anti-malarial medication, so it can be used to treat malaria. And quinidine suppresses CYP2D6 metabolism, thus leading to increased levels of metoprolol and increased risk of metoprolol-related side effects. So it can especially lead to excessive heart rate and blood pressure reduction. Digoxin is also another medication that can interact with metoprolol. This is another antiarrhythmic medication. Digoxin can increase metoprolol levels and related side effects through an unknown mechanism. And then verapamil is also another antiarrhythmic medication that can interact with metoprolol. It's a calcium channel blocker. And they both will increase levels of each other. So there can be increased levels of verapamil and increased levels of metoprolol, leading to increased side effects from both. Metoprolol can interact with a variety of other medications, including clonidine. Clonidine is an alpha-2 adrenergic agonist. It's used to treat hypertension or high blood pressure, drug withdrawal, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Both metoprolol and clonidine can interact to increase levels of each other, so there can be increased side effects from both of them. And then there are a wide variety of other medications that can interact with metoprolol, including cimetidine, furosemide, amiodarone, chlorpromazine, ritonavir, and many others. Generally, they're all very mild interactions. So metoprolol can interact with many different medications. Generally speaking, they're going to, again, be very mild interactions. I talked about the more severe ones that can occur in this lesson, along with the medications that people more commonly use. If you want to learn about metoprolol side effects, please check out my lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching, and hope to see you next time.